just in this one year, 24% rise in people seeking help for gambling problems. Should this be seen as a good thing that they're asking help or a bad thing that there's such an increase? Well, I think you've got to uh, um, put the weighting on the latter. Yes, I mean, it is, of course, it is good that there are people seeking help. But, of course, the question is, uh, that's uh, dealing with something after the problem has arisen. And, um, and what is important to do is to stop the, the throughput of people having to seek that help in the first place. This latest set of figures, Chick, is kind of the latest in a, in a long line of um, pretty awful stats that have come out that says just how desperate this, the gambling crisis is in this country. At the back end of last year, um, the Gambling Commission was saying they sort of looked, re-looked at how they how they examined problem gambling and, and and in their view anyway that they said that problem gambling was eight times worse eight times worse than they previously estimated go back a month before that um there was talk about how the the big rise in people um seeking help for uh, for online addiction and i think uh, people probably think you know, you think about gambling issues, you probably think about kind of a day out of the races or going down the bookies, but so much gambling now is carried around in people's pockets via their mobile phone. Um, and uh, let's, I mean, let's be utterly frank about this. Gambling wrecks lives. It wrecks, it destroys families. You see people ending up in prison. You see the ruin that's being brought um, uh, on, on people's families. Uh, gambling is terribly destructive. And Kieran, I, I guess it has to get pretty bad before somebody even, you know, plucks up the courage to seek help. Yeah, I think I think you must be right. I mean, going back to that that sort of the upstream element of this, the, the government have sort of done a review on this. Um, they did it last year. It was pretty vague. There were some good things in there, but it was pretty vague. And one of the key things it didn't really deal with at all is uh, the bombardment of advertising. So people... Uh, uh, who have an issue are, are, are seeing these uh, adverts encouraging them to gamble wherever they look. Yeah, football matches, um, you know, it's on all the hoardings. It's on. It's on football shirts. Uh, it's it's on your TV ads. It's on your it's on your your computer. It's on your it's on your laptop. So there's no way you can go. So whilst there was some good things, it really needed to go a lot further. And uh, they've consulted on it, um, but it's an, it's multi part. It's very drawn out. I mean, it was a review that got got delayed and delayed um it sort of felt like the camera's been kicked down the road but this is this goes right back to 2005 chick i don't think people really appreciate this that when uh, the government then sort of changed the law made had a much more of a free-for-all on gambling and we're reaping the rewards of that now the terrible rewards of that now as we see in these latest figures and I think one of the things that's often forgotten, I was involved in this issue some years ago, and I remember the figures that, you know, we often think of the problem gambler whose life is affected, but for mm. every prom problem gambler, I think there's roughly seven or eight people on average who are impacted negatively by their problem. It, re it really eats into family life. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think probably even within the church, there would be many who kind of put gambling into this sort of bit of harmless fun sort of bracket and uh, we need to change our thinking on that nationally and, and 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 as the church because it is if you think about what gambling is it, it really taps into human beings greediness a desire to get rich quick to take shortcuts um that's not that's not a biblical way of thinking about um how you how to how to make money it invariably involves someone else taking a financial loss it disproportionately affects the poor um you know it's not an, it's not a neutral thing it's not a it's not a harmless bit of fun i think it's unhelpful to think of it in that way and we uh, and as christians we shouldn't think of it or talk of it that way well, I don't know whether I'm a little too strict in this, but I'm even a little worried when, when churches do a kind of raffle. I just think anything is the thin end of the wedge on this. But that's another subject. I want to ask you this. Do you think mm. the government is doing enough to address this? I mean, it's been consulting on the idea of a 1% levy on gambling companies. Are they really doing enough? Are they taking this seriously? It doesn't look that way. It doesn't look that way. Uh, there's a lot of pressure. The all-party parliamentary group in gambling uh, have said some very strong things on this over a number of years. Um, but as I said, this, I mean, the review, the gambling review that they've done that got published in April 
was delayed and was delayed and was delayed. The consultation on that is on it seems to be very, very long and drawn out. There were some, I mean, credit where it's due, there were some positive things in there, um, particularly uh, some stuff to do with um, just slowing down people's uh, gaming so that, 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 you know, there's not, there's not kind of uh, just constantly pressing a button and so on. Um, but a lot more needs to happen, particularly in this area of advertising. Advertising is what presents gambling to people as an attractive option um it's always the kind of the win kind of scenarios that uh, that get presented you don't generally see a t television advert where someone is saying um i went to you know this betting company and i i lost loads of money come to them too you know advertising doesn't work that way it's it's, it's set up to be attractive and to draw people in and as we as we said with dev often with devastating consequences Selling an impossible and destructive dream. One mm. last question, if you can deal with it in a couple of sentences. What ways can Christian groups and churches respond to the gambling problem? Well, get involved with the consultations. That would be the first thing I say. Just be aware of, of when it's happening. Organisations like the Christian Institute, but there's others there, can, can point you to that sort of thing. Um, take it seriously. So recognise uh, the significance of what I was saying about the 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 inherent what's inherently wrong uh, about gambling and then if you come across a situation where somebody um you know someone's gambling just encourage them away from that get them to get them to seek help